Hello, this is Bill Bullard with RCAF USA, the voice of the independent cattle producer in the United States of America. Well, this week's segment is being brought to you directly from Washington, D.C. RCAF USA is in Washington, D.C. this week to talk about the need to continue our trade reform efforts. We have expressed our support for the tough stance that the United States has finally taken against China's theft of our intellectual property, against China's cheating, and against China's devaluation of their currency in order to gain an unfair advantage against U.S. farmers and ranchers, U.S. manufacturers, and even U.S. workers. So we met with trade leaders today in Washington, and they included Congressman Bill Pascrell, who's a Democrat from New Jersey. And he's very concerned about the need to reform what was a quarter century old North American free trade agreement that has harmed the U.S. economy. We also met today with Senator Marco Rubio, a Republican from Florida who was in fact a presidential candidate and also was in fact an ardent free trader. And now he realizes that free trade simply does not work and does not exist around the world. And what we need is a more strategic trade policy. And he is working hard to reform our trade policies vis-a-vis -vis China. We also met with Tammy Baldwin, a Democratic senator from Wisconsin, who also is very supportive of achieving the trade reforms necessary to rebuild the U.S. economy, both for manufacturers and for farmers and ranchers. And then we met directly with our U.S. Trade Ambassador, Robert Lighthizer, and we expressed to him the need to restore country of origin labeling so U.S. producers, cattle farmers and ranchers could begin to compete in their own marketplace against the flood of imported product that's being brought into the United States as an undifferentiated product that competes directly with U.S. producers product, even though the U.S. producer produces the best beef in the world under the very best of conditions, the meat packers have been given a license under the North American Free Trade Agreement to expand their source of inventories by 31% because that's how large, in addition to the United States, the cattle herds are in Canada and Mexico. So these meat packers can unilaterally decide to import cheaper cattle and cheaper beef with which to leverage down U.S. cattle producers' prices. For example, they can import a 12-year-old cow from Canada or Mexico, bring it into the United States, slaughter it here, and all the resulting beef could be labeled as product of the USA to compete directly against the beef produced by our own American farmers and ranchers. But it's even worse than that. Because right now, these same meat packers, and remember, there's four meat packers that control 85% of the fed cattle slaughter in the United States, they are able to, with impunity, import beef from foreign countries, bring it into the United States as a beef product in a big box, and then unload the big, big box and put it in smaller boxes and put a product of USA label on that beef and sell it to unsuspecting consumers as if it were produced right here in America. So this is absolutely wrong. It's deceptive, it's harmful to our US farmers and ranchers. And in fact, it eliminates opportunities for new entrants into our industry. Because every time that the supply situation is such that cattle prices start to increase, the meat packers simply substitute the domestic beef with imported product and they leverage the prices down. So we explained that over the course of NAFTA, which is now known and measurable, we had experienced a negative 17.7 .7 million metric ton deficit in our trade with Canada and Mexico. But the industry has been telling Washington, well, wait a minute, that's not right, because we import a cheaper price product, we mix it with our higher quality trim, and we sell the resulting hamburger to McDonald's and Burger King and other fast food restaurants. So they say it's not the volume you need to look at, it's the value. But if we look at the value, we see the situation is even worse because we are actually importing and exporting the very same type of beef products from Canada and Mexico. And so what we see is that over the course of the NAFTA period, about 25 years, we've accumulated a $34.3 billion deficit. With that, we're out of time. We hope you have a productive week. Thank you and goodbye.